Welcome into another edition of the Cornell Insider Podcast, giving you some tips. It's a bit of a reunion. It's been a while. Look at this guy. It's been this a long time. ACL Pro Blake Karnick is back from college for a little bit, so we figured we'd have a little fun here and do some uh, instructional stuff for you guys. All right. We fired up for the uh, upcoming ACL season and all the traveling you're going to be doing. Um, I, it's going to be tough. It's going to be fun. Thanks to my main sponsors, Ultra Cornhole, Element Exteriors, for helping me out on my journey. Uh, thanks to Knob Creek Design, local board maker here in Birchwood, Wisconsin, and uh, Kyle Ralph and the folks at wreck -It Boards for providing some boards. Also, we had those boards at the Badgerland Bag Brawl. It was on court number two. Well, kind of one, but we'll call it two. So thanks to all those folks for sponsoring. Thanks to wheelwayautos.com also for sponsoring uh, some of our ventures here. And today, Blake, we're going to talk about, I think, the part of cornhole that can be the most confusing and a lot of times even causes some pros to stop and think what I'm going to do. And that is that first or second bag that's right in front of the hole, whether it's six inches, 12 inches in front of the hole, there's a lot of different options. Yeah, it makes you think and there's a bunch of different options. Like you said, we're going to go over kind of five things you can keep in mind when you have to face that early round blocker. And we have a very special guest who's going to be joining us on a couple of these segments also. We'll give you just a little bit of a sneak peek to see if you recognize maybe who this guy is. All right. So we're going to have a very special guest. we got five different areas we're going to cover on the push shot, or rather on, on, on handling that first bag blocker in front of the hole. And the first one is the basic push, and we're going to dig into that right now. Okay, so we're going to talk about the very basic push bag, and that is just we have a blocker in front of the hole, first, second, third bag, whatever it may be, and you're just trying to push through it with bag in hand going in the hole or at the very least on the front edge. And This is why we talk about, Blake, if you're able to get that straight, flat bag, it makes this type of shot, the push shot, a lot easier. Makes it a lot easier. You can just kind of push through it way easier. You're not going to bounce off as much if you have a crooked bag. It just makes your throw a lot more consistent if you have that tight flat bag while trying to push through that blocker in front of the hole. Leaves a little more room for error if you're left and right. Your bag and hand is more likely to stay in place. So let's see if we can get an ACL Pro here to show us how to push through that simple little blocker in front of the hole. Now when I'm approaching this blocker right there, I'm trying to throw it farther, not harder. I'm not trying to just throw it really low getting through it. I'm trying to hit just kind of my normal shot just right behind it. If I get through with both bags, cool. If I bump and replace, I sometimes like that even more. So I'll take that's beautiful. I like okay. that. Yep. Bag stayed right in front of the hole. It wasn't a perfect hit, but his bag skid a little bit to the left, but very much in bump and replace, and that's a problem for my opponent as well. Yep. Okay. You want me to push through that one? Push nope. it, push through it, see if you can finish it up. Asking for a lot here. And that's my opponent. I saw that blocker in front, and then I bounce off the side. Yep. And then my pitch goes 10 round. All right. So the importance of the flat bag, if you can throw it, obviously it makes that push shot a little bit easier. Not yep. perfect all the time. Like you saw my first bag there, like it wasn't perfectly down the middle, but I didn't bump off it too much. It just kind of stayed right with it because I have a tight and flat bag. It definitely helps when I'm trying to push through a bag. Even though my second one wasn't perfect, it still kicked off to the side. It gives you a lot more lenience when you're trying to throw that shot. I think it's one of the hardest shots in cornhole right there is, is the push shot. So let's talk a little bit now, Blake, about how we're going to deal with a push shot for someone who maybe doesn't have a perfectly flat bag. Um, for whatever reason, you're just not able to do it. You're an old man like me. Physically, you can't get that flat bag <laughs> all day. Whatever it may be, maybe your bag comes in sideways, it tumbles. So let's dig in a little bit as to how we can handle that. My philosophy is is if we get that bag in front of the hole, or if our opponent puts that bag in front of the hole, and I'm not throwing a real flat bag that day, I'm my number one thing is, is I'm going to get that push shot a little bit higher and deeper. Because I think that a bag, if you, if you throw a bag that's not flat and it kind of flops, and it comes in like this versus low and hard, that that bag is more likely to hit and stay in play versus coming in low and tumbling left and right. We see that a lot. Yep, that's the right set of mind when you're trying to throw that push shot with a bag that's not as flat or tight. And like you, like I said in my last push shot, throw it farther, not harder. That's kind of a concept that you're taking in the mind also. I've given into the fact that I'm struggling throwing a push shot. I'm not going to throw it low and hard because chances are that my bag in hand is going to skid left or right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put that bag back there. 
a little bit low ceilings here, but I'm going to get that bag up in the air a little bit and see if I can push through that and leave my bag in front without it kicking. Yep. I'm going right. to set it up for you. All right. You get Blake, prepared. Blake's going to give it a reset down there. <clears throat> and I'm going to get some good height. We've got, what do you say, Mr. Bag Daddy? 14 foot ceilings here or so? Nine. Nine? <laughs> he said nine foot ceilings. <laughs> That's about All right. right. So I'm going to get a little more height under this. All right. This isn't my last bag, but I'm trying to just get a little more height on this, land it right behind that bag. And then my goal is the bag in hand will not skid left and right because I know I don't throw that perfectly flat bag. So here we go. Okay. Just to the left, but didn't kick off that much. You just missed it. Yep. So it was a little bit high, but if I would have thrown that bag really low and it would have done that, chances are it probably would have skidded off the board. At least it's, it's not really a bumper either. Like you just, you're yeah. kind of behind the hole, which isn't the worst. Let's thing. try it again. I'm going for high. So when my bag lands, I can just bump that in and keep mine in play. That's gettable, though. So again, it's not a horrible shot for a middle, lower level player. I mean, yeah, you bumped theirs in. It wasn't the perfect shot. Put one more in front of the hole there, Blake. Let Odds are with like three or four more bags total by you both thrown in this round, that bag's going to come back and probably go in the hole. So yeah. it's not bad. We get one out of three, 33 percent, which is about what I run on these type of shots. So let's get a little bit higher here. See if I can just come in right in behind and give it a little, perfect. little bit of a nudge. That's perfect. And again, it's right there at the hole. It's not out of play, totally out of play, left and right. So I guess my tip would be, Blake, uh, when when we're throwing that that against that blocker that's in front of the hole, if you know you struggle with your bag kicking left and right, it's not perfect. Get a little more height on it. Now, if it's your fourth bag, you might want to get it a little bit deeper if you're trying to push through and have your bag go in, because obviously there's no, no more bags left. Yeah, I got to emphasize, you don't want to throw that infamous fourth bag blocker, but yeah. just you want to get through it. But those shots you threw, you threw three of them, and none, like all three didn't go directly in the hole, but two of them are easily collectible throughout the entire round. Yep, and we see those pros who throw that tight, low bag, the Ryan Windsors, Noel Wootens, that tight, low bag, and they just push through. But for most players, it's just not realistic. So adjust your game a little bit so you can make yourself more successful dealing with that first bag blocker. Yep. All right, let's d dig into the second one here. And we're going to bring Mr. Bag Daddy in for this. And we're going to talk about dealing with a blocker like that that's not perfect and using the step out. So let's do that now. All right, part number two in talking about that early round blocker. You see we have laid out, it's kind of a lower blocker. We're going to talk about trying to step around this block. Now, Al, you mentioned something off camera and that you're trying to become more like putting your bags in play. Elaborate on that one. Right. When, when, if your opponent has its very first bag, he puts it right in the middle in front of the hole, there's probably a 95% chance that ba that bag is going to end up in the hole no matter what you do. So the, the, your goal should be to keep your bags in play. You know, don't throw it so hard that you push his and then you go off to the side. You know, stay down the middle with it. Yep, that's just kind of one of those elements where you're trying to play smarter in the game and just keep yourself in it throughout the round. So we're going to try demonstrating stepping out and getting around these blocks, leaving the bag in play. I'll kind of start with the bag that has that flatter, tighter rotation and show you how important that is. And I'll let you throw one or two to show what your mindset is going into it. Outstanding. So looking at this one, like I said, that tighter, flatter bag is just going to give you a lot more consistency with these types of throws. I shouldn't kick off this as much. I mean, the worst case scenario, I wanna be covering this bag. So I'm gonna be stepping out, not the full like three feet or anything. I'm just gonna step out a little bit and see if I can kind of take position in this round. Now I threw that a little short, but I'm still covering my side. So it's not the worst thing. And your, your bag is still in play. Still I mean, if you play. throw it a little, you can throw it Ideally, you put bully that bag just a little yep. bit. So I'll throw one more bag here just to kind of talk about, it's the same thing with pushing, basically. I want to throw it a little farther right below that bag. I'm going to see if I can push my bag up a little bit and bring both my bags in play. Beautiful. Perfect. I bullied his bag out of the way. My bag went in, and I can still collect my bag. So, Dad, can you reset those? I just put one blocker out, so... Al can try getting around it a little bit. Now, what's your mindset when you see this in the game? What are you telling yourself? What I'm thinking for myself, if it's my opponent's bag, is I want to hit the edge of his bag and maybe move it a little bit. Yep. 
but keep my bag, try to get my bag at least side by side with his bag or maybe yep. even in front of his bag. Yeah, and the one I threw, like it wasn't a great bag, but I went side by side. I still kept mine in play, like he said. So let's see the owl bag daddy step out. Perfect. Stepped out right around it. Hello, it professional. Out. He's <laughs> made for the camera. That was a perfect shot. So, like you said, he just trying to bully it out a little bit, pushed around. Perfect. So now we're going to move on to step three and dealing with those early round blockers, and that's laying up and playing a bit more conservative. All right, part three of dealing with the blockers, like I just mentioned, we're going to talk about laying up. Now the layout on the board right here. That blocker of Al's is kind of on my side of it, so I'm not too comfortable with going around it like I just did. So I want to play a little bit more tactically, a little bit more conservatively in the layup. Al, what do you think when you see this kind of situation? Well, what I'm thinking is, first you have to know who you're playing against. You know, Do you, do you feel that your opponent's a really good air mailer? Maybe your best choice isn't to block it, but if you think that if you block him, you're going to score points on him. That's what you're, you're thinking, you know, so... So you want to force him into making a mistake is your mentality. Yep, and this is kind of a good mentality for kind of a lower-level player also because a lot of high-level players might say, hey, I got an airmail chance here, I got a roll shot, but this is something to kind of take control around and make your opponent make a mistake, kind of. So I'm going to try laying up here. My goal when I see this block, I mean, I want to lay up behind it, maybe even a little bit on that left side to cover his side. But I just kind of want to take that bag out so of like play. When, when you, before you take this shot here, is your mentality, do you prefer to do this slick side or sticky side when you uh, block? Stick side all the time, just because it's not going to kick off as much. And slick side, it's harder to get control when you're trying to block, for me anyway. Some people may want to lay it up a little higher and stuff for that slick side. But for me, I'm just looking sticky side right behind that bag. So I'll try laying up kind of on your side a little bit. Oh, that was pretty short. I'll try one more just to see if I can get it there. Come on, pro. There it is. That's a lot better. So second try, I bullied his out of the way a little bit. I took control of his lane. And it really it really takes away my options for my next shot. I mean, right. it, it's either try and roll a bag or airmail or lay up. You know, there's yep. just I don't have a lane at all. So I'll reset it here, and I'll let you try covering it. See if you can do better than my two attempts. I'll put it a little bit on your side so you don't have that option to really step out. Let's see what bag daddy's got. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a little deeper than I wanted. It was deeper, but I mean it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Like your bag <laughs> is still in play, like you said. That's kind of a main goal of a round. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. We'll do one more. See if you can cover this bag that's on the board now. Keeping the bags in play, like you mentioned last time, is a That's the main goal, goal is to keep your bag so it's, you can still push it into the hole at some point. Yep. That's not terrible. It bounced off a little bit. I'm going to have a chance to push it up, but theoretically that bag still could be in play. And like you said, that's the general goal of when you're trying to throw these bags against blockers. So we'll move on to step number four, or part number four of dealing with the blockers, and that is when you should shoot the airmail. All right, the fourth thing, and there's probably more than five, but we're covering the main ones anyway. Hey, you're back. You're back. Hey, I am back. <laughs> <laughs> Slipped away to the bar there for a second. By the way, we're at, uh, we're at the lanes here in Park Falls, Wisconsin, and they let us come down and throw bags whenever this banquet hall is open, and we appreciate Eric and the folks letting us do that thing, especially in the wintertime. It's a nice option. Hard to do a video in the snow drift out there. So the fourth one, we're talking about airmail. Now, if you are a good airmailer, I think especially, Blake, when someone's playing at switch holios and stuff like that, and they're doing something that maybe is a little less intense than a bigger tournament, I, I think they have to have the guts at times on that first bag blocker to go ahead and let it fly, right? Yep, depends on the situation, who you're playing against, but... When you see that type of bag right there, it's kind of similar to the one we just showed in the round before. But I don't want to step around it, and maybe I don't feel comfortable just laying up and letting my opponent shoot the rolls and the airmails. I want to be aggressive. I'm feeling good. 
sometimes it's okay to shoot the airmail if you're feeling confident about it. Yep. And if, especially if that first bag blocker they throw in front of the hole is lower on the board. Now, if it's right up there on the hole and that bag is a kind of an easy push maybe on their second bag, for you to airmail, I think, might be kind of silly because you're giving them a maybe a fairly easy shot to push that uh, bag in. But if that first bag comes six, eight inches down, kind of a tough push for your opponent where you may look at him and say he doesn't have a flat bag, not a good pusher. You know, maybe let her fly. Put some pressure on him right away and take control of the round and make them make a tough shot. Yeah, that's not an easy push on the board right now at all. If it was, like you said, like kind of hanging on the hole a little bit right away, then it's kind of careless to chuck that air mail right away. But yeah. in my mind, I think, I think it's okay for some players to go ahead and shoot the air mail here. Do what's comfortable for you, but if you find joy in air mailing and you're good at it, work at it at the switch holios you get to tournaments i tell you what guys who can nail air mills at some of these bigger tournaments um they provide a lot of problem for people because they're not used to seeing that at, at their local tournaments yeah if you put a blocker down your opponent just bangs an airmail home you're like oh this guy's confident and i gotta be on my game because they're confident and they're feeling good so there's a certain mental strategy to it also all right so i threw that first blocker against blake and now he's gonna shoot it here we go <laughs> All right. Bang on the airmail right away. See if you can start a round off confident. All right. All right. He missed, he missed it, but look where my bag is sitting. It's still in front of the hole. So I, if I'm going to make a shot here, I've got to try to push through see that. See if one. you can push it. Yep. So I'll try to push through this right now. Not okay. an easy push. And now, off. And now I don't have to airmail around this anymore just because that bag got bumped to the left. I can step out a little bit like we just talked about, and I'm going to try to go around, go in the hole, or at the worst, cover his bag. And yep. went right around it. It's a good shot. So what we're saying is when you get into a round, especially you get two, three, four rounds deep into a, uh, an event and you know that your opponent maybe is struggling with that shot, it's really a very low risk airmail, that first bag airmail, because you know that when your opponent throws a second bag, pretty good chance he's probably not gonna take them both with. And if he does, more power to him, but you're taking a shot you feel comfortable with, making your opponent throw a shot that you know they probably don't feel comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, obviously I would have loved to bang that airmail right away and put a lot of pressure on my opponent. I missed it, but I left you with a tough push still. You bounced off. I went in, now the worst case in this round is I'm going to give up one point in the 10 nine. So just recover yeah. and give up the one, move on to the next round. Don't be afraid to shoot that first big air mill once in a while. Just maybe, a couple points. Yeah, maybe not all the time. Yeah, it's not as many points as you think. So our last one we're going to talk about um, is we're going to talk about, maybe this is a little bit upper level, but the roll and the cut shot to get around um, to get around that first bag blocker too. Do you or Al want to present for this one or no? I think Al should. He's, a, <laughs> he's kind of a, <laughs> So we'll do that here in our fifth step here and getting around that first bag blocker. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the roll on the cut shot to get around a blocker. Now, a lot of people listening may be thinking, well, I'm still trying to work on other aspects of the game, roll shot, cut shot. But I'm also talking about those of you who maybe naturally throw a bag that moves a little left to right or right to left. Maybe your delivery and your, the bag comes in weighted where you know it kicks this way or kicks that way. That also can serve as a, as a cut shot using maybe one of the flaws of your throw <laughs> to kind of benefit you to get around a first bag. You can kind right? of speak on that from oh, experience yeah. a little bit. Anybody who know, plays me knows that they better not leave me a left to right little spin around because that's the way my bag goes and it's an easy throw. So play to what your shot is. If your bag typically hits the board and kind of flops left or right, well, use that to get around a first bag blocker, right? Yep, it's a nice option to have. And if you're one of those players that have that roller cut shot, it's just nice to have in the arsenal. Like when I see the block, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to roll or cut it every single time. But sometimes I think it's the smartest thing to do. And if you think your opponent either just is struggling with his pushes that day, or if I'm feeling more comfortable with my roll shot than my airmail, I think it's a little bit of a smarter play. Right. And it's it's a good shot because typically if you miss that cut shot, in this case where you see that bag a little bit on the left side, it's probably going to hang around. It's probably going to yeah. hang around that hole, right? Yeah, and staying in play like we've talked about, keeping your bag in play, it's a lot more likely that it's going to stay around the hole or be able to be brought back than with an airmail. All right, so Blake has a little right-to-left cut shot. So you see the first bag blocker is just a little bit left to center, just a little bit there. So Blake's going to try to cut around this, and at the very least leave it around the hole. 
Okay. Yep. Let's see what we can Leave it in play or cover the All opponent's right. bag. Let's All see right. if I still got the cut shot in me. And I was a little short. That wasn't as far as I wanted it, but served as a good layup. And now you can't get that bag. Yeah. So I'll I'd have to airmail right now if I want to go in, unless I can really push. I'll try throwing one more cut shot, just because that right to left is still there. Almost had it, but it stayed on the board. If I'm going to try to step out slippery side, or if I'm going to airmail it, if I miss it, off the board. Yep. At least give, it stayed on. Give it a try again. I'll throw a cut. All right. Let's see. It. See if I can. Get one around the hole at least. That one's hanging right in the hole. That's nice. Now that one's in the hole. If I try to do anything, airmail, his is going with me on that. Now this, this is a bit of a decision for me also because I got my last bag. I don't think a cut shot is the smartest thing here because I want to get my bag that's hanging in the hole and my bag that I'm going to throw. I want these both in the hole. Since those two bags are kind of making it hard for me to step out. I'm going to shoot an air mail here, see if I can drag my bag. All right. See if I can finish off the round. Got it. Nicely done. And I think that's a shot right there, Blake, that a lot of people miss out on. And I do this a lot too, where I step out on that and the odds of my bag and hand going in on a push shot that you would have, I would have tried there, probably not very so good. You're, gonna throw it, you're probably going to throw it way too hard since you want both your bags to go in. It yeah. causes a lot more inconsistency, like I said before. Throwing your push bag harder makes the shot a lot harder. And you might have blown your bag off the back. And then I think an airmail is the smartest play there to get both your bags in. Of course, if you're playing conservative. If you want to lay up or throw a cut shot, it's just a lot less likely that you're going to get your bag and that bag that was dragging in the hole. Right. And just remember, I think, Blake, when you play at your weekly leagues and switch holios, and maybe you play occasionally in tournaments on the weekend. That The weekday stuff, that's the time to work on that stuff. Yeah. It's not life or death. It's a $10 entry fee. Have fun with it. Work on some of those shots. And that way you know when you go to a big tournament, well, you can say, gee, I suck at that. I'm not going to try that at a tournament. You know you tried it already, and you kind of know what you're coming. Yeah, just with. experimenting a bit and asking your friends, like, what would they do in that situation? I mean, like that situation right there, that's something that we obviously didn't plan to talk about, but mm -hmm. it's just something that comes up on the fly. And I think a lot of people can learn from that because some people are just set that I'm just going to slide, slide, slide. I'm just going to roll over every single bag. It's nice to have different options in your game to rely on in specific situations. Yep. Dealing with first bag, you can have that. Oh, Dealing with first bag blockers, there's a lot of different options in there. Know your strength. Play around with it. If you don't throw a flat bag, try that a little higher trajectory on the early bags, especially. I think you'll find that you'll at least keep your bags on the board and in play, which for middle and lower level players is a very important thing. Yep. All right. Thanks to Al Bag Daddy. Al, you want to say hi? Thanks to Al Bag Daddy Woo! for a guest. Hey, all right. For being a guest on our show today. And uh, hopefully we'll have another one coming in a, in a couple of weeks. We've been very busy and trying to, trying to get together. So thank you, Blake. Thank you to Team Ultra, baby. Team Ultra and Element Exteriors. Looking right. forward to the season. Thanks for supporting uh, the team. We appreciate it very much. And more to come here. More tips for you on the Cornhole Insider Podcast here on the Northern Wisconsin Cornhole. Please like and subscribe. Yeah, Northern please, Wisconsin please. Cornhole YouTube page. We'll see you later.